Hi everyone, I'm Adam with PNG Technologies. Today we're in our inspection room and we're shooting a video for Practical Machinists and I want to give you some insight on why we chose to purchase this new digital height gauge as opposed to a full-blown CMM machine. Uh, this is our old CMM. It's an old Michitoyo. I don't know what year it is. I guess it's an early 90s model. It's a DOS-based program if that gives you any indication of uh, how old it is. It's a great machine. It's, it's really robust. You can see how it's built. It's a great built, it, it was built uh, high quality machine. We used it for many years. I had a dedicated operator that kind of ran this. He wasn't dedicated to this. He also machine parts for us, but he was the only one in the shop that ran this machine because he was really the only one who learned how to run it. Um, and he would run it more in a manual mode. Typically he would grab the parts, pick what feature he wanted, uh, grab the probe and move the probe and, and touch the reference point or touch the, the, the diameters of, of whatever he's checking and then it would spit out dimensions. It, it was pretty easy to use but it was a good machine. Over the years it started to alarm out. We had some alarms in X and Y and we were able to, to, to fix those but then we got an alarm in the Z axis and when we went out to the market and talked to CMM repair guys about getting it fixed or, or you know getting parts for it, they basically said parts aren't available for this old antiquated equipment and nobody really wanted to work on it. We did find some people that would retrofit it for us, but the cost of the retrofit, once you get into the new probe and the new scales and a new software and a new computer to run it, we thought we're better off just purchasing a new piece of equipment at that time because it's pretty expensive. So again, when we had this machine, there was one person in our shop that was dedicated to running it. Uh, everybody else in the shop would kind of hand him their parts and if he was out of running a machine, he would stop, come in here, check the parts for you, and then send you on your way. The reason, um, so when we decided that we wanted to get a new CMM, uh, one of the local supply companies that we purchased parts from, or purchased uh, supplies from, cutting tools and abrasives and that, they were having an open house. So I took Ed, our foreman over there to the open house to do, uh, to, to watch some demos on the inspection equipment. All the major brands were there, Michitoyo, Starrett, Fowler, Mar, um, and they started to demo the CMM machines and they were all fantastic. The, the, the handheld scanners with the probes, I was really impressed with those. I was really impressed with the arms that you can mount on the corner of a table and, and move. And that, that was nice. The arms were nice because they get you a little bigger envelope, a little more uh, versatility as far as how big you can check. The one thing I kept going back to was they're kind of complicated and I'm probably going to have to get a dedicated operator for those machines. And right now where we're at in our business, we're a small shop, we've got about 20 guys running around here. Um, I didn't want to take and make a dedicated position to a new piece of equipment. And I take that same mind, mindset when we're purchasing new CNC machines. I try to keep all the machines in our, in our shop either have a Haas control, which is a FANUC based control, or they have FANUC controls on them. So all of our operators can jump around from machine to machine and, they're all very, and the controls are all very similar. So it's flawless whether the guy's running a feeler with a fan and control or he goes over and runs a Haas. Um, it's it's kind of seamless going back and forth because they're all fan based controls anyways. So I didn't want to create a dedicated position for someone to come in and I'm going to have to send them for training and learn how to run one machine and then nobody else in the shop can use it. So as these vendors were, were going through all the the demos of the, of the CMMs and the arms, they, they said, hey, let me show you this cool digital height gauge. And they started to show us how they check parts. And Ed looked at me and he said, that's what we need. And I was pretty excited because the cost of the digital height gauge is, is a fraction of some of the other equipment we were looking at. Uh, and again, just to give you an idea, you know, the digital height gauge is roughly like five to 10,000, depending on which one you want. The CMMs are anywhere from like 30 to 60,000. So big price difference. And again, my main thought was, Who's gonna run it? Our shop, again, I wanted every machinist to be able to come in here, put their parts down, check their parts, and get back to work. And this digital height gauge does everything that we need to do. It takes about 10 to 20 minutes worth of training, and your operators have it down. So again, the big reason that we went with this over that was simply because I did not want to create, or, or I didn't want to create a new position or take somebody out of the shop and, and make them learn something new, and then everybody else in the shop is gonna be relying on them to check their parts with the new CMM or ARM or scanner or whatever we had chose. So this is a Tremos, it's made by Fowler. Uh, I don't wanna to get too much into the particular equipment because I'm not trying to do a commercial for Fowler, I just wanna kinda of give you insight on why we chose this in our small shop. Uh, it's a great machine, it does everything we needed to do. It goes up to 39 inches. Um, it's got a spring-loaded carriage, so the spring-loaded carriage takes operator error out of the equation depending on who's cranking it. 
uh, the machine will beep when it gets the information it needs and you know you're done. So the spring-loaded carriage is a very nice feature to have for, again, operator error or you know, from operator B to operator C, whoever's running it. Uh, the spring-loaded carriage kind of takes all that uh, out, out of play. You can get a 12-inch extension for the probe so you can go out further. You can check depths, widths, grooves. Um, it stores up to nine reference points, which is very important to us. You know, typically what we're checking on a part, this is the part we run in our shop. And when we run this part, what, what's important, the important features to us on this part would be the size of the bore because there's gonna be a bearing pressed in it and the absolute location of the bore based on the slots on the side because that's where it locates. So this part's gonna slide into something and uh, it's gonna locate on the slots on the side and then that bore's gotta be, gotta be in, uh, in the right position or it's not gonna, the machine's not gonna assemble properly. Uh, so this is a great part to check on this machine. It's very simple. Again, we could set it down on the side, we could check, we could check the, um, the size of the slot, make sure that they are correct, we can stand it up, we can check the size of the bore, we could set the part on blocks, and then use the, the one, two, three block as our reference point to, send, to then get the absolute position of the bore off of those slots. So the machine does all of that, very simple. Uh, and you can also print your dimensions, so once you're done checking the part and all those reference points, the machine will store them. You can send it out to a printer, have a nice uh, inspection report to put in the file in case anything comes up, you know that the part you made was good. Uh, just to give you an idea of how simple the machine is to work, uh, I'll show you just checking the board here on this part. You have to have it in, 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 the, in the bore mode so the machine knows you're checking a bore, but you just bring it down. And once you get down, it starts to show you some lines and then you rock it back and forth and it tells me that it found the low point. So I will bring it up to the top of the bore, engage it, and now I know my size of the bore. So the bore is 5.006, which is exactly where it should be. We have brine stock in there. That's it. That's all it takes to check a bore. So it's a great machine in the sense that our guys can come in, they can bring their part down uh, within a minute or two, uh, confirm, the size of the, confirm the dimension, make sure it's good and get back to work. So it's an absolute, it's just a fantastic machine. And again, we can check the depths of the slot. We can use that, we can find the center line of the slot very simply by uh, putting it down on a block, checking the size of the slot, finding the center line, calling that our reference, and then moving over and finding the center of the bore. And it's gonna tell us exactly where that bore is in relation to that, that reference point that we made. So it's an absolute great machine. We love the fact that it's kind of versatile and mobile, you know, it, it stays in here 90% of the time, but we also have granite tables out in the shop by the machine. Uh, if we're running a big production job and we wanna make sure we're checking every single part, we can move it out in the shop. It's easy to move around, it's not that heavy. Um, and then the guys can check parts right there on the floor, validate that we're making good parts and move on. So anyways, uh, we really chose this because our small shop, we didn't have it in the cards right now, or it wasn't part of our plan to create a dedicated position for somebody to just come in and run a piece of inspection equipment. We were really looking for a piece of equipment that everybody on our team could use, and it's great. All the machinists use it, our fab guys use it, our saw guys know how to use it. Um, so we couldn't have, it's, it's really worked out well for us, and we're really happy with the purchase. Thanks for watching.